go. Okay, we're recording, and I'll uh, hit the thing, and here we go. It starts in three, two, uh, wait. <laughs> <laughs> I like your countdown. Three, two, wait a minute. I wasn't where I thought I was. Okay, here it is. Three, two, one. Are you ready? I'm ready. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Skim. I'm Scott. And I'm Kim. And uh, welcome back to another Skim show. Someone in the chat just said we should touch spikes. Because <laughs> our hair is both spiked up. It's kind of pervy sounding. That is a little pervy. Don't you think it's a little pervy? <laughs> Touching Watch spikes? Watch yourself. Yeah. Uh, Kim has cooler spikes than I do. Mine are very artificial. Although I need to color them again. I've got my silver going You're on. You getting your silver on the sides? Well, I, I went to the barber, Yeah. which is is kind of fun to do now. Wait, really hold on. Hair. Explain this. Kim went to a barber barber, not like a hairstylist. Like right. A, not oh. a salon. Yeah. I went to a barber, What's which was difference? kind of funny. Carter and I went together. Went to the barber. We were the only women there. Yeah. Except the barber. Did it have did it have a pull outside, slowly turning, doing the red stripe up the white pole? Yes, they had okay. one of those. Actual barber. It was super fun to go. Yeah. And I got a better haircut. I totally did a fade where yeah. it, you can goes from skin to hair on my the back of my neck, and I love it. Was it an old guy? Uh, no, actually, it was a girl that did my hair. Oh, I was hoping. But I think some... there was a lot of old guys in there, kind of looking at Carter and I, like, "What are you doing here?" I wanted like full stereotype funny. here. <laughs> it was. It sounds like I'm not entirely getting the stereotype. It was, but... and it was a lot of fun. And did now they, I need to color they, it again. Did they straight razor anything while you were there? No, but they went straight to to trimmers instead of there was no scissors or anything. Can you confirm? It was awesome. The chat room is going to need this because okay. a bunch of people don't believe me about this. Can you confirm? That I have never in my life paid for yes. a haircut. Yes, I can confirm that. Are you? Well, you don't sound happy about I, it. I think it's funny because I feel like every once in a while when I'm cutting your hair, it would look so much better if you went to a barber that knows what they're doing. But I do cut your hair. You do a find it. Look, look at this. <laughs> look at this. Chat room, everyone on YouTube. This is fine what you see here. This is all right. It's fine. Why and pay? yes, he has never been to a professional haircut place and paid for a haircut. Actually, you went to one once, but it was a free one. I did? On your mission, I think. I don't remember this. Did they do it for... Oh, you know what? I do remember that because they were... It was a dresser that was like, hey, they, you need to... Yeah, the, I'll cut I, your hair. It's yeah. free. If somebody said, hey, why don't you just come in here and get your hair cut? We'll, do, we'll give yeah, you a freebie. Yeah, it wasn't... I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't pay for it. No, you've never yeah. paid for a haircut. Yeah. It's I mean, mostly been... It's been wife, mom, roommates... Uh, yes, and I think that's so funny that you even sisters and occasionally your roommates daughter. even did that because mm -hmm. you were both needing haircuts and it was like I'll cut your hair for you. It's just I don't know. It's funny. I don't think I would have ever trusted my roommates in college. Oh no, to be like sure, especially those were they were mean to you. They weren't nice. <laughs> I never a nice roommate. No, every fine. time Whatever. Kim would come home on the weekends from Idaho for uh, while she was at school, mm -hmm. and she would. Uh, just have like 50 new stories of what buttholes your roommates were. <laughs> but I think a lot of people have those stories. A lot of people have stories of roommates that you're like, how are these people so such jerks? Do you think that's just a... It's more common than I, I think I think it it's is. more common than you think. Yeah. Carter had the same problem. She did. College. She got up there and ended up with like... And that was just two years ago. Yeah. That sucked. I like, hated that. Just mean girl stuff. Yeah. I don't know. Well, here's the problem. So the school like did this. School the school thought they were again. being smart. They got this brand new facility, brand new living quarters, brand new, all this cool, this rad place up there that they built at the university. It was all engineering students. Yeah. And it supposed was to be. Supposed to be. And engineering across the board, like uh, for what Carter's going into, video game design and art and animation and all that, plus other engineering kind of categories. And it was, it was awesome. It's just a, the coolest place with the most awesome right. communal space and this cafeteria thing at the bottom i mean it was like right it was like the real world season two in this place it was awesome <laughs> the cool part too was that each floor of the building had different engineering departments so you had your chemical engineers your environmental engineers and then her floor was eae which was entertainment arts and engineering which is the video game design yeah there aren't very many girls going into that program sadly i think it will grow but at the time at the time, there it was brand new. Right. So here, this is the so, brilliant idea yeah. they had. They went, hey, you know what we'll do? We'll fill it out with a bunch of business majors and uh, mean girls. Uh, <laughs> that wasn't really the, I don't think, the idea behind it, but uh, it's what, what it happened. That's what felt like. I was pissed. And she didn't have the greatest experience. It was a bad experience. They treated her like some kind of weird nerd. 
Yeah. Uh, all they wanted to do was watch Real Housewives of wherever. <laughs> and she was like, um, she'd be in the middle of a Star oh, Trek of episode. The Bachelorette and things. And Carter was like, shoot me. This is like. Oh. So not her, dude. Like, it couldn't yeah. have been more far from her. I hated that whole thing because she, I could just hear it in her voice. I would talk to her almost every day and we'd draw together and do some like streams and stuff. And I could just hear in her voice that. She was just miserable yeah. with those girls. She but she was it. very much the daughter that just said, it's fine. It's fine. I'll be fine. Yeah. And she just kind of plugs away at things. So. Yeah, she gets through it better than I would have. But yeah. <laughs> I was still, I was mad for her. And Anyway, back to haircuts. Anyway, yes, haircuts. Scott has never paid for a haircut. No. I can confirm And next time that. you see me in public, don't go, ooh, I can tell. I have decent haircuts. <laughs> yeah, if you say, ooh, I can tell, then you're talking about me. <laughs> yeah, you're actually ripping on Kim's haircutting <laughs> ability, which is just fine, by the way. I don't <laughs> Um, it's my, not just fine to rip on my haircutting ability. <laughs> my but. mom, my mom always did a good job too. I don't know if I'd trust her now because she's all knuckly and well, eighty. She's, <laughs> I don't think she would like to hear that now. Well, she's got like uh, she's all knuckly. <laughs> she has really, she has had for her whole, most of her life. She's had really bad arthritis. Yeah. I, don't, I don't know what brand of it, but mm-hmm. her knuckles are the size of like your kneecaps. Just big, gnarly, freaking monstrous okay you need hand. to stop because i don't mean it i'm not making fun of her i feel terrible that she has to deal with that it but, sounds so much worse than she, it really is though <laughs> she's not she is not gonna cut my hair anytime soon i don't no. think at age no. 80 so no. yeah it ain't gonna happen good. it's fine you probably won't be cutting I'll hair at 80 cutting, either i'll be cutting your hair as long as i can and then i'll teach carter how to yeah and that'll be fun she'll shave funny things in the back of your head and you won't know here's what i probably <laughs> am gonna inherit my mom has like horribly thin uh, wispy hair and she has to wear a wig as a result you've definitely thinned (laughs) i've thinned you have it bald (laughs) but you've thinned yeah but i don't mean just a a receding kind of thinned no it's the hair itself yes the back of your hair is thinner than it used to be maybe we should try some of those products for thinning hair we should just see i don't think those work dude those are all isn't it worth a try no really you'd rather keep thinning if they give me some free samples fine (laughs) But I'm not paying these these hack I've jobs. Found, no, I'm not talking major stuff. There's just some shampoos and stuff that are supposed to work. All right. We'll we'll read the reviews, see what happens. We'll I, let you know. I definitely have not thinned <laughs> myself. No. <laughs> Physically, I have thickened. Physically, no, just your hair. <laughs> I have thickened in the last uh, couple of years. In fact, I was just looking at a photo I posted in 2016. And I'm irritated because don't, Facebook said, don't hey, be irritated. hey, Facebook's here. We'd like you to see this thing you did. And I look at it and go, oh, really? I could have just I could have just knuckled yeah. down then and not gone off the wagon. And now, I'm, you know, I get the 40, 45 pounder. I think it's hard when you are in a good place sometimes. Like you've got this new grandbaby and it's almost summer. And I think you just get really excited about things and. Kind of eat more. Yeah. Normal. Yeah. That's all right. We all do that. I have terrible. Uh, and the holidays were just recently. And so that's always a lot more party food than you planned. Yeah. I ate a cookie this morning for breakfast. Is that oh bad? my gosh. Why? Not a whole one. Just one of those just, pieces. Not a whole one. <laughs> <laughs> you still ate cookie for breakfast. Yeah, I did. <laughs> it was good too. Carter made them last night before she went off to GDC, which is uh, another did. thing that's going yeah, on. Yeah, she flew out, out this morning. Yeah. I dropped her off at the airport. She went to GDC. She's very excited. She's going to see Terpster while she's there. Yeah, but if you're hearing this and going, what is GDC? The Game Developers Conference. It's held in San Francisco. Convention, yeah. Annual, Game Developers annually. Convention, yep. And she goes there for... Uh, Six days. Both work and school-ish. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a... It's a benefit either way. She works in that department, so she gets to run the booth at GDC, Mm -hmm. which is kind of fun. Or help run it, not run it. There's a lot of them going. Um, Six or eight of them go from the department. Yeah. And she's excited but nervous. She doesn't love travel. Yeah. I mean, she she likes to go places, but she doesn't love the actual day of travel. Sure. She's like me that way. She hates it. Yeah. But she gets there, and they'll have a booth, and they'll get to talk to a bunch of people. She got to meet um, uh, the voice of Kratos last year. Oh, yes. Yeah, she was very excited about that. Uh, I name. like your snapping. Christopher Judge. <laughs> anyway, so she's super into that, and she's like, um, she'll run into some people I know. Like you mentioned, Terpster will be there, and so it'll be fun. It'll be yeah. a good experience for her to, she's excited. to see all that. I wish she could go to more of the keynote type stuff. I think she gets to. That's why so many people go, so that people can choose, hey, I'm going to run to this yeah. while you're here, and I'm, you know, they switch off and talk about who they saw and what they talked about. So there's it's a good. Big it's Goog- good. There's a big Google uh, keynote that I would want to go to because oh. apparently this is like their big... Uh, entry into Convention. the games world so we'll see what that means right. um but anyway that's what's going on hey check this out 
I took a little heat this week for something on Uh-oh. TMS. I thought we could maybe break this egg open a little further here. <laughs> While you're out of town, and most of the time when you're out of town, certain things will hit me. Like, uh, and you were gone, what, two days? I was gone two days. Two whole days, though. Two whole days. Yeah. Once like, in a while, it'll hit me. Really something early. like, I'll be like, oh, yeah, and things are normal. Everything's fine. Kim's not here. It's fine. Oh, shoot. I'm out of socks. <laughs> <laughs> oh crap! I, uh, my jeans are all dirty. Oh no! Where are my hats? <laughs> like just stuff yeah. like that. Where's my stuff? <clears throat> and okay. uh, and then I'm presented with the option of oh that's laundry. And Kim's so good about laundry that I never have to think about laundry. So when laundry's gone, I'm kind of an idiot about laundry. And then Brian agreed. He was like, oh yeah, when Tina leaves town, I do the same thing. Ha ha ha! Moving on. And then we stopped talking about it. Okay. And then. A gaggle of very nice ladies from our chat all got together on Twitter. You just called them a gaggle. I don't know if that's nice either. Is that a is that a negative uh, term it now? It sounds a little. Uh, Everything's offensive squawky. now. So is yes. it okay. okay? I didn't mean it that way because I like them all. Okay, everyone just be in careful, that. Mister. Everyone in that group, <laughs> I like. They're nice. Okay. But they they got on Twitter and uh, <laughs> with or without me, just began the sort of back and forth about um, how lame it is that we are so helpless when our when our wives leave like get up and do some damn la- laundry kind of attitude oh, now i'm gonna I don't know. It, look if it got bad enough of course i'm gonna of do, course laundry. do laundry I, but i'm not gonna be great at it because <laughs> it's out of sight out of mind it's like dishes when i do the dishes i did them today this morning yeah i am sure there are two or three dishes in places they don't belong now okay yes this happens when you do dishes <laughs> the, just yesterday you were doing dishes which yes he does dishes all the time yeah Thank you. I usually don't empty it, though. Um, but he didn't know where things went, so he started setting things on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 that's not where they go. No, just one thing on top of the refrigerator. <laughs> it was two. It was a couple of cutting boards. Yeah, yeah. Like, but I thought that's just, where there's go, go. those right go. right there. Yeah. That's where you thought they went, except whenever you, This is my only <laughs> concern. You know where to find everything when you need something, but you never seem to know where it goes when it's clean. Well, I don't even know. <laughs> even then, when I'm going to go make something, or you say, get this certain kind of pan or whatever. It's, That's true. I'm That's banging true. through some serious <laughs> Is it down cupboards. here? Is it, the, fun, the most fun part is that whenever he'll ask me a question and say, where is that? And I'll point, it's right over there. Yeah. And you're looking like this. <laughs> Where? What are you talking about? Uh, like, for, you won't ever look at me where <laughs> where I'm pointing. <laughs> for audio listeners, she's looking up in the sky yes. somewhere. Where? Yeah. What are you talking about? And uh, they never look at you to say, <laughs> oh, they're pointing right there. Uh-huh. Well, okay. So, John from Florida says, uh, Scott should be able to do his own laundry, and I'm not in the gaggle of women. I know. <laughs> See? They don't like that what term. What <laughs> I'm saying is, I'm, I 100% agree with people. All I'm saying is... Because I don't do it as often, I'll go into the laundry room, bring in my stuff, and I'll have to think for a minute. Wait, is this the kind of pants that you can go with these shirts? Or is that going to cause some kind of weird fuzz out that I don't want to deal with? And so I have to think about things that she already knows. Or I'll be like, all right, what soap goes in here? Is it the liquid <laughs> one or the funky packet with a little dot in the middle? <laughs> like, I don't know what half that crap is anymore. Okay, let's straighten this out. The reason I do all of those things, and this has been a conversation I've had with a lot of people, they ask me, you know, how is it that it works? And I always say, you know, they ask me things like, why don't you play video games? Why don't you do the same kind of thing? Yeah. And yeah, we do this show once a week and it's awesome. It's perfect because we make the time for that. Yeah. But the rest of the time, yeah. all of those other things happen because I'm not doing those. <laughs> I enjoy laundry. Yeah. I know a lot of people don't. I know lots of people that don't. But I enjoy doing that. And so I get a kick out of making sure everything else runs so that Scott can do this. Well, this is part of our thing we talked about last week. You were able to do all of this, you know, podcasting all day long. Yeah. Why are you laughing? I'm laughing in the chat room. Oh, gosh. Because they're just get, heaping it on me. They don't, oh, honey, I'm sorry. Everyone thinks I'm full of it, but go ahead. But Scott's done his laundry in the past. Yeah. So I wasn't it's, laughing it's, at it's you. It's really good. I was like, why are you laughing at me? I'm I just talking laughing, over I'm here. I'm not laughing at you. No, it's, it's. I'm laughing because I feel like there's no win situation for me here. It doesn't I matter think what I do. There's a lot of men who jump in and do a lot of that stuff because they need to, and there's this 50 50, but our 50 50 is just in a different place. Yeah. You're, you're do this stuff so that I can then, I was able to stay home with the kids. Yeah, but on the other hand, I understand why people would see this as perpetuating some sort of stereotype that 
the woman does the home oh, and the, gosh, the husband no. earns the money. Like, it I, is not one of those situations. It's not. And, I, and anytime, it's hard to explain to people that it's not. Anytime I am walk in the kitchen and go, oh my gosh, are you serious? This kitchen, I cleaned it this morning and I'm not doing it again. Everyone knows they better get in there and take care of their mess. Well, the kids <laughs> I don't often, just. I don't yeah. put on an apron ever. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I enjoy cooking. That's why I make dinner every night. Yeah. Or at least try every night. Um, I think it's kind of fun that I get to do that. Yeah. I, I look at it like I get to have the time to do the laundry, sure. cook the stuff. Anything I don't like to do, I don't. Do. I'm still willing to admit that it's on me for not being better at it. Like, like for example, it's easy for me to say, ah, oh, Kim's such a good cook and I'm a terrible <laughs> cook. Could I improve? Absolutely, I could. Yes. Could I go spend some time studying it and figuring it out? Oh, totally, I could. Yeah. And I probably should at some point. But I just haven't. And I'm saying that's on me. I'm but admitting I, to it. It's true that I actually enjoy doing laundry. I like folding it all perfectly. And Carter did the laundry the other day, and I was like, Carter, we need to work on this because mm-hmm. these this is not folded. They're inside out still. <laughs> well, those they'll change their tune. And when they'll they change their tune. But own. I really do enjoy it. I yeah. enjoy the pulling each load out and folding it all and then putting it all. It's I don't know. Right. It's the and same it's team. Little, it's like when the kids it's not would quite barf. OCD about it. If the kids would barf or the kids would poop, I would do the barf. Kim would do the poop. Oh my gosh! Every time. That was the split, and it's still the split. The <laughs> other day, oh, this was even better. Carter sliced her thumb off. I talked about oh. this on TMS a little bit. Well, she didn't slice her thumb off. She's the very tip of it. She sliced off, and it was a part of her thumb was me, sliced off, and it made mom yeah. it made you it made really me queasy. queasy. I don't you were know. losing it. I usually am fine with that stuff. I right. just. I just know how sharp the knife was and the feeling that it would make that if it cut. Oh. So I ran in there and became Mr. Focused Doctor You're like, Man. okay, this is what we need to do. We need to take care of this. Yeah. We need to look, all under let me control. look at it really close. Okay, let's it's bleeding too much, blah blah blah. It didn't you bother know. me at all. And didn't I make was me like, queasy. Weak need for it. I don't know why. Yeah. I've taken care of the kids all along with all kinds of different things, but there's not been a lot of knife slicing things. No, we haven't cut a lot blah, of things blah, 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 off. Blah. Not a lot of digits being cut off with knives, but for me, that didn't bother me at all. In fact, it was just like a very mathematical See, talking situation. Talking about it still makes me a little like <laughs> yeah. tingly. Ugh. So we have that sort of stuff. <laughs> but uh, Ken from Chicago, no, sorry, who was it said here? Oh, Red Links in the chat says, Scott, have you ever vacuumed? Um, yes. Of course he has. All the time. Now, that's no problem. I can vacuum with the best of them. I can use a floor, a carpet cleaner with and the best I of them. And if I walk in and say, hey, we need you need to vacuum this room or you need to make the bed or whatever, he's like happy to do it. It's... And I'm not trying to be a control freak by liking doing laundry. She or has a standard she likes to I keep. I just, I do. Yeah, she likes a high standard. And we, we are high standards here, can't you we tell? We try to have good standards. I mean, this office isn't a good indication no, of that. No, it's but that's not. A, that's, a, that's a me problem. But that's not my room. No. <laughs> my office is my kitchen. Yeah. This is the, this is the uh, argument I use whenever I need nicer things in my kitchen. I'm like, this is my office. Yeah. And then he goes like, oh. Okay, now I get what you're saying. <laughs> this is my office. Yeah, no, I and and I respect it, and I, she respects mine, and, yeah. and we try to just, you know, we just make it work. But nobody's ever going, you're the woman, you do it. No one ever did. Bring me a sandwich. <laughs> it's not my job to do that. No, yeah, no it might never be this. Said that, it which... might be this. She says, oh, I'm going on a couple of errands. Can you grab me pot bellies while you're out there? Sure, I'll grab something. Yeah. That's different than, That's different. <laughs> give me a sandwich. <laughs> Where's my lunch? <laughs> right. I don't do that. <laughs> no. In fact, most of the time, I'll just nibble my way to oblivion if i don't <laughs> if she's not around to remind me to eat something decent so yeah, that's true oh anyway your um, little snacky lunches anyway so yes please don't feel like he's making me do any of the things or that he doesn't help around the house he does yeah he just doesn't hasn't done laundry in a long time the first what how many years of our marriage did yeah. you go off to work and so i was at home and that's when i you know got it the way i liked it and then he hasn't really done a lot of laundry. No. Unless I'm out of town. No. I did a ton in my 20s, especially early on. I did all kinds of laundry. And I'd like to say that he does all of the yard work, but that's not true. That's not true at all. We kind of 50 50 that too. Yeah. Kim has certain parts of the yard work that even if I try to Once do Once again, would get I have irritated. standards. I have my flower pots. I want them all living. Yeah. You'd like them to live? Is that <laughs> like the thing? I'd like them to live. Oh. And so I do that too. She'd like, them to, she'd like her plants to live and flourish and grow. But this is the perfect analogy. Scott mows the lawn, mm-hmm. but I do all the edging. Yeah. That's like the perfect <laughs> She's situation like, for me. Because I'm usually like, ah. You're just mowing just lines. Just get this oh, long yeah. last. I'm just going to mow lines, mow, mow lines, lines. And yeah. then I'm like, I'm going to make sure all the little tiny weeds are taken care of. <laughs> 
And uh, and FWG Mills has a point. Kim, I don't see Scott making you do anything. That oh, is absolutely no. freaking true, dude. And the minute I try to cross that line, <laughs> you're in she'll trouble. Kick my ass. <laughs> so then the southern comes out. That you're fixing to get in so much trouble. Yep. And the southern lady <laughs> pops out. Scary southern woman. Everyone's afraid of around here. Even the dogs. A black pinky. What is that, Robert? Robert. A black pinky? I don't get it. Oh, he has the opposite of a green thumb, he says. Oh, my gosh. Pinky. Nice. I like it. It's racist. All right, let's move on. <laughs> uh, hey, I got I think somebody. that's what he meant. Terry sent me a link. Uh, okay. I don't have a last name, but somebody named Terry sent this, and I'll read you the headline. They didn't put any message with this. They just said, 11 signs you were raised by a toxic parent and that it's affecting you now. So I don't know why they sent us this. <laughs> Maybe it's to see if... Okay, let's, let's this read this or whatever. So I'm going to read it. Okay. And we'll see how this goes. Okay. Another survey. Uh, they never respected boundaries. That's number one. Okay. Uh, by that, that means, um, you know, if you had your own, like your parents always have boundaries. Like don't get into right. the thing. Don't touch the VCR. Whatever what's it is. What's yours is mine and what's mine is mine. Right, right. <laughs> okay. That's kind of that. What's but number I, two? I felt like my parents and your parents are okay at that. Yeah. Totally. Number two, did they or they didn't provide affirmation and security? No, we've always done that. I feel like, and that my parents okay. did too. Okay. I mean, I th- I think I was slightly traumatized by my dad's business failing Dealings, completely yeah. in 1985, mm-hmm. and then trying to deal with what that. But that wasn't about, about affirmation to you. That was because he was always very supportive of you. Oh no! It, this was me. Uh, this was that's me what seeing what was happening I think to that's him. What and, they're talking about in the survey, though, is like yeah. You're you felt secure in the fact that your parents approved of what you were doing. Right. I think okay. we were okay there. Number three, they were overly critical. No, my parents weren't super critical. Not either. really. No. I mean your mom. And we're not we haven't been really critical of the kids. No. I mean no. specific things were like, okay, you need to do better, but it's not critical. I don't yeah, know. And, you know, like I've said on the show before, sometimes I catch myself being too critical in Nick's case, just because I can see so much of he's me the in the boy. Him. Yes. He's just me. He's me in every way yeah. at that age and it I don't know. I see that and I go, oh man. If I was, if I could go back, if I could go back. (laughs) Okay, number Um, four. Number four, they didn't follow through. So, like, hey, if you get all your good straight A's, I'll take you to whatever. And then they wouldn't do it. I I had that sometimes. Did you? Where it would be like, oh, we got to get everything done. Oh, wait, they haven't finished their chores and you're done. So I'm going to give you extra ones. I was like, dang it, I was done. Oh, I remember yeah. doing that. But we had a really big family and we had a lot of chores to do. For my mom and dad, it, it was, hey, we want you to succeed in art. We'll get you this uh, this airbrush you've been begging for. and then, But we won't give but you the compressor. You, you'll have to earn that. I don't know how you're getting the, the, uh, the compressor. It's kind of yeah. like saying, here's a car. I don't know what to tell you about wheels and a motor, but good luck. <laughs> anyway. Okay, number five. They don't give you space. <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, I, I don't think it was my parents that didn't give me space. I think it was because I grew up in a really big family. I, I was telling the kids yet, just the other day, yeah. I don't think that they were doing that survey of, of your childhood. Yeah. And it was one of them was, did you ever feel alone? Mm. And I thought, I don't think I was ever alone no, in my house growing up. You always had up. like eight or nine siblings. I was the second of ten. Yeah. And but by the time I went to college, there were still seven kids at home. Yeah. Like crazy, you right? You were second to oldest in the yes, family. And of ten kids. That's a lot of freaking it, yeah. kids. And so I never felt, <laughs> never felt lonely. <laughs> never felt alone. <laughs> More like, can yeah. I be alone, please? Everyone leave me alone. Yeah, they, uh, <laughs> they were... Yeah, I don't know how you guys did it. But yeah, you never really had that. Now, I had, on the other hand, I felt like a lot of room to be on my own, find my own space, create my own world. Like, I, I feel really good about that part of it. That that was an intense sort of creative time for me. Yeah. Growing and up. And that's good. Yeah. They left me a lot of room for that. That's it meant good. I didn't do my homework and stuff like that. But. <laughs> you had time to do your homework. You just weren't working on that. Okay. Number six, they okay. lived to serve you. I don't think that ever happened to either one of us. Hmm. No, I don't think we had that. And I don't do that to my own kids. No, not at all. I mean, some people would say that because they're like, you do a lot for your kids. And I'm, I don't know. I feel like I have a good balance there, but. You don't live to serve them. No, I don't live to serve them. That's true. I mean, we worry about them. Number eight, right? Seven, sorry. They threatened or intimidated you. Not at all. Not once. Closest I ever got to that was, um, uh, the time I kicked my, or no, I put peanut butter on my sister's <laughs> leg, my sweet, kind sister's leg. Oh my gosh, this leg, story's so great. And I smeared it all <laughs> up and down her leg, and my dad 
heard her crying and she never cried. So when she did, it was a big deal. And she, he was totally like that was his baby girl. Oh, my gosh. He protected her yeah. like nothing oh, else. Yeah. And, Absolutely. And he, he was never like this in any other way <laughs> my entire upbringing. But that day when I did that and made her cry, peanut butter was just the tool. It was it was whatever you just made her cry. Peanut butter on her leg. I think every kid's done something similar to that to their sibling just to piss him off. Yeah, and he kicked me so hard <laughs> in the butt. He kicked me with his foot with a steel toed shoe that he oh. had for work. Kicked me so hard in the butt that I I'm pretty sure there's still part of a shoe in my butt. <laughs> nice. Right up my butthole. <laughs> um, but I learned a real lesson that day. I'll tell you what. Oh, good. I sound like right. kill all of a sudden. All right, uh, how about well, they were helicopter parents? Nah, not really. No, no, never saw that. That's more of a now problem. <laughs> Okay, next one. <laughs> uh, they never finished. Sorry, they never listened to you. No, I don't think that's. No, I don't they, think. They listen to me. I think we really tried to listen to our kids, but I felt like I was heard. Oh one. yeah, for sure. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they were just plain lazy. I knew a lot of friends' parents who were lazy. Like, just kind of seemed like, like they didn't parenting care about lazy. Yeah, parenting lazy. Like, ah, whatever. Sit in front of the TV. That'll babysit you. Yeah. Sort I of think thing. that can happen now too where it's a lot easier to oh, totally to can happen off, now hand off your phone before they even are upset about anything yeah your minivan has a movie theater in it now like, <laughs> you've got ipods and iphones and and, and handheld tablets yeah. and uh, a million things for kids to be distracted by i think it's uh, the temptation is, i actually think these devices are good i mean this is not me complaining no i definitely think it's uh, they're learning devices if you're working on them being that yeah, you instead of limit their time just all. handing it off yeah. just hand it off so that you don't have to deal with it that's pretty lazy right. uh they tried to be best friends with you kind of gilmore girl style no didn't get that either didn't really have that although no. it's weird because didn't try to do that with our kids either but i have a really close friendship with I carter that's more than just hey i'm your daughter or uh, you're my daughter, I'm your dad. I still don't think that's the same thing, though. It's not friends. the same thing. It's not. But You just have a lot in common. You're really good friends with her. Yeah. But you've never been like, rather than parenting, I'm going to give you everything you want so, right. that we can, so that you'll like me. Right. No, I think that's more what the best friends thing is. That's a good point. Uh, and then finally, I don't know that's all there is. That's it. And that's all there is. So <laughs> I don't know why they sent this to us other I, than I guess it's the thing to I talk think, about. I think other people, I think us and other people need to hear it yeah because i think those are the things that can change your relationship for good or bad yeah and your kids do you think uh hmm i mean obviously there's a billion blogs of the billion posts oh, yeah. and everybody has seems to have the think they have the answer to this stuff but the other day the whole family took the what's it called test um ace that's test that's what i was talking about yeah oh you ACE were talking test. about the ace test yeah. okay so i didn't realize that's when you meant so the ace test is this like actual used in clinical psychology evaluations that you give to people to assess their, their childhood, childhood right yeah. it's the at the end of it you kind of have a score from one to ten and it's widely considered uh not uh it's not like a, a magic stone that tells you all the truths in the world it's it's a good guideline for this is kind of roughly where you're at and so then a therapist or a cognitive specialist or somebody can kind of mm-hmm tailor your treatment according to that and how they want to work with right. that stuff. It's, it doesn't fix anything or it just gives you a score of this is how, what your childhood on a scale of 1 to 10 what it was like. Yeah, and they were so. you had to be 18 or younger or no, 18, 18 or, older or older to take mm-hmm. it and that was just to say well between your 0 and adulthood you know, let's sum it all up kind of thing. Mm-hmm. I would recommend people look that thing up. Look for the ACE test and take it and just see what you get. Um, I think you might be surprised. I know some people that were very surprised that they scored so high, but they also have suppressed a lot of feelings about the stuff that made it high. Mm-hmm. Um, I was shocked that mine was so low because I'm such a frantic little weenie boy sometimes. <laughs> um, you are not. I can be. <laughs> I think you were as a kid, but you're not anymore. <laughs> I wouldn't call you that. <laughs> well, and then I was happy that my kids had very low, low scores. Carter had a big fat zero. That was awesome. Mm-hmm. So uh, and Nick too, I think. But uh, oh no, did he take no, it? No, both of to them had it? some of a score. They all had. Did they was, all have some of a score? I was the only one with a zero. Oh, you were the I only one like, with a zero. That's what it was. I was surprised by yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. But I had a great childhood. It was. You guys should check it out if you're 18 or older. You should take it and just see what it says. Mm-hmm. And don't take it that serious. I mean, the, what it doesn't account for, and it even says in the test material, it doesn't account for coping mechanisms that you've come up with on your own, or that yeah. your support systems around you make a huge difference in your resiliency. They bring up a lot mm-hmm. uh, to issues that may have been traumatic or not when you were a kid. Like it's a great 
uh, they, they break that all down. It's not meant to be this like, oh my gosh, I just had a magic lady in a tent tell me all the secrets. <laughs> it doesn't work that way. But it's called the ACE test. If you do a Google search for ACE test. Yeah, ACE. Wendy recommended it too. Yeah, she Wendy, said it was a Wendy really says good it's test legit. for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wendy being my actual therapist sister for those who don't know. All right. Uh, let's do some, you want to do some emails? A couple let's of these. Let's do it. Tim Martins wrote in. Uh, this is for food on the road. According to the episode 17, we talked about you know making decent food for people while they're oh, yeah. traveling. Says so your caller on skin, uh, 17 asked what she could send with her hubby to eat uh, all week, and it got me thinking. I'm a trucker, generally away from home for three days, home overnight, and then gone for three days again. And my wife is so good about stocking the freezer for me, I thought uh, I would put in my two cents. We try to limit our carb intake. I'm round enough as it is. <laughs> Here are some of her favorites, or our favorites. Lasagna, smart pasta, zucchini, spinach, cottage cheese. Smart pasta is probably just, what, less uh, less carbs or it's more... It sounds like they use the zucchini as the um, layers instead of pasta. Oh, that's... Okay, that could be. Yeah. Uh, raw vegetables with individual hummus servings. Mmm, Costco. Those are good. <laughs> uh, Costco makes really good... Mmm, Costco. Yeah. I it's like a their, brand they have at Costco. It's not Costco's brand. <laughs> it's not the same as all their other brands. Is it? It's not. What is this? It's not Kirkland brand. No, is it? No. Like just water. The one I'm you drinking. like is the same kind I can get at regular stores. It's just in a bigger container. Oh, all right, fair enough. Yeah. Um. All right. Shepherd's pie made with yam and sweet potato, a fifty-fifty mix. Mmm. That sounds really good. Any soup she can think of. Salads are also good on day one or two, as long as you package the ingredients separately. Spinach salad with dried fruits and berries is still a favorite four years going. Uh, wraps generally don't hold up well. Uh, we shy away from those. I would agree with that. Uh, contrary to Scott's feelings, a Subway sandwich is pretty good on the road, as long as you <laughs> buy it fresh and eat it right after you buy it. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> yeah, but you could say that about any sandwich. I mean, they, they just start yeah, to get soggy. Yeah, it's just whether or not you're willing to stop and eat on the go or if you're going to pack everything yeah and three days on and three and a day off is really good because three days is about the limit of you know yeah. when something's lasts as, as well sure it also finally says one final thing i've learned living mostly on the road is that presentation has a big effect when you buy your food everything is in plastic the uh, glass dishes with the liquid tight plastic seals thanks again costco yes. let you eat your food from a glass dish let me tell you eating a non-plastic food item makes me feel human that's true. I, like I agree that. with that. It's pretty good. Uh, he says, I hope you find this useful. Love the show, Tim, from the out, uh, just outside of Vancouver, British Columbia. Thank you, Tim, because that does make a difference when it's someone that's doing that. Mm-hmm. If you're already the one taking your meals with you, then we'd love to hear that. Oh, yeah, because we don't know. I'm I don't like, know. I don't know. You, yeah. know how, you know where I travel to get food. <laughs> Whoop. A couple staircases. We're good. <laughs> uh, here's one from Jay in Ventura, California. He says this. As, long, uh, as a longtime Twit viewer, I have known you for several years, but I've never enjoyed your presence on a podcast as much as I do on Skim. Oh, that's so nice. I take that both as a compliment and something rude. Just kidding. <laughs> it's totally fine. No, no. Uh, he says this. The biggest surprise, though, is meeting Kim. She is the best. I could listen to the two of you talk about, well, anything. Thanks for the show. <laughs> now, during these precious remaining days, while I still have somewhat... Uh, uh, sorry... While I still somewhat legal to disagree with official government and or social positions, I encourage you to read what the uh, Association of American Physicians and Surgeons just two weeks ago said on the subject of vaccination. Ooh. Uh, he also then goes on to say, my wife, taken by, from me by cancer, oh, that's awful, uh, has or was a hospice nurse until her employer required all nurses to be vaccinated against hepatitis and influenza. Educated by her, I stopped... Uh, I finally stopped getting vaccinations in 2002 and have, had, have not had the flu since. That's obviously an, an anecdotal fact, but I continue to be remarkably healthy. My wife told me uh, something I have uh, since read somewhere else, that most nurses and doctors have strong negative feelings about vaccinations. Eh, I know plenty of doctors and nurses who would disagree with that, but whatever. That are, <laughs> that are friends that are telling me that in personal ways, so I don't know. Anyway. Um, this is why there's controversy about it. It says, not in principle, but as a practice by the industry that makes billions of dollars by selling vaccines uh, while bearing no legal responsibility for injuries or deaths caused by those same vaccinations. Did you know that you are the only one legally responsible? Well, you and Kim and all American taxpayers. That's the deal with the RX industry uh, made w- uh, with our federal government. Anyway, thanks again. Best regards to you and your ever-expanding family, Jay in Ventura, California. Thank you, Jay. Well, Jay, thanks for the, the differing opinion. I appreciate it. 
I'm not sure I 100% buy it. Um, I still say a lot of the reasons people don't get vaccinated is just down to straight up paranoia and conspiracy and that provable scientific fact wins out at the end of the day. But I'm really glad you're healthy and feeling good. And also everyone's different. I knew a guy yeah. who smoked cigars till he was 98 and he did great and smoked them since he was 14. <laughs> um, I know another guy who started chewing tobacco when he was 15 and by 22 he had mouth cancer. So yeah. it just it's sometimes it's where the ax falls and it's yeah. all about percentages of likelihood. So yep. True. I guess. Good luck. is what I'd say. Uh, Hey, let's do one. I uh, got somebody else sent a test and they didn't leave their name. A test. A test for Kim. Okay. Are you ready for this? I'm ready. Hey Kim. Let's do it. Let's do a little test. Scott's favorite food. Mm, shawarma. Is it? I don't know. Is it? Probably is. It's really good. <laughs> I was trying to think. That's your what? favorite meal I make you that you tell me is your favorite thing. That and jambalaya. Yeah. Okay. And then I could, like any time there's a steak involved, but those are, I mean, that's just cooking a thing. So yeah, you know what? <laughs> that's just cooking a thing. Your homemade, your homemade <laughs> shawarma is real good. Yeah. It's, it's really good. It's pretty good. Um, okay. Second question. Scott's favorite movie. Uh, Avalon. Oh, you're, you're probably Avalon, well, still correct. It used to be Avalon. I would say now it's. Oh, gosh, why can't I think of the name of it? You have so many things to say about it. <laughs> Let's say, does I'm that like, have something to do with uh, uh, a mad person? Yes, Mad Max, thank you. I'm like, <laughs> I can't think of the name of it. Yeah, now it is, but it used to be Avalon. I think if I was really... For the really, first probably 10 years of our marriage, it was Avalon. I still yeah. think if I was to make like a top five or 10, I still think Avalon's in the top oh, couple yeah. of spots. Yeah. I think that Mad Max Fury Road is definitely in my top five. My favorite movie of the last decade, easily... And counting is easily uh, Mad Max Fury Road, but that could change. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, you're right. Avalon is a, okay. is a sweet, Avalon sweet movie. Avalon was for the longest time. Yeah. You got, y'all I should, always have that in my head as your favorite movie. Y'all should watch it if you haven't seen Avalon. It's a... Okay, uh, it, next question. Yeah. It's the... By the way, it's the... Uh, 19, there's a couple of movies called Avalon. It's the one from like 92. Oh, yeah. By... That's right. Who made uh, Rain Man, that director. Barry Levinson. Okay. That's his movie. All right, next up. Um, third question where was it here it is Scott's favorite TV show <laughs> uh, TV show this is going to be hard Gosh, because it changes yeah because I don't even know if I have one now I, see I got the right answer they're so good <laughs> we are living in a time of embarrassment of riches when it comes to TV I was going to see I'm right it does change it changes constantly he doesn't really have one ask me one week right. it's Breaking Bad ask me the next week True. it's Fargo ask me the next week it's uh depends on his uh, mood too. yeah and it's, my, it's, it's like game music. of thrones for half a minute and then it's this other thing like so many good shows it's impossible for me to <laughs> say but if you got real particular and said hey what's your favorite animated show on tv i'd say futurama if you said what's your favorite show set in minnesota and the dakotas I'd i say still Fargo. say i was right though it you, changes you are right all the time. you're right it can change <laughs> Okay. I'm in the minute, minute, or I'm in the middle of trying to get through I'm three season out of three, three of, here. This is really no. Good. You're kicking butt. You're doing okay, good. Okay. What's number four? Number four. Final question. Final. Scott, Scott's favorite kid. Parentheses. You don't have to answer that one. <laughs> I don't have a favorite. I'm not going to answer that one. <laughs> I don't have a favorite kid. I love my kids all equally. They're all See, awesome. four out of four. Not bad. Yeah. No one. No one has favorite kids. Do they? Do the people do that? I, I hope mean, people. Not. People are probably going to go. Oh, you Carter's totally your favorite. No. She's favorite not. for different things. Taylor's well, yeah. your favorite photographer. Carter's your favorite well, artist. <laughs> Nick's your favorite son. <laughs> yeah, he's the favorite son of all. But no, there's things about each of them that that are unique and stand out. And and yeah. and in that way, I notice that and say, oh, it's my favorite thing about you or whatever. But I don't have any like. No, know. there's not. No, that's weird. There's not the least favorite kid either. Nobody should do that. So, that's good. Uh, well, thank you, anonymous sender who that's wanted really to funny. know those things. I guess I don't know. And I win. <laughs> That's all I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's how that worked out. Um, all right. Well, that brings us to a moment in the show that I always look forward to anyway, ah. and it's this. Will you remember to eat the right way? All right. Every year, Kim throws a a food bash right around or on St. Patrick's Day. Yep. Now, we and didn't this, do it today. This week, it was on Friday because that's when family dinner night is. Yeah, and today is St. Patrick's Day. Yes. And we're not doing it today, which is a bummer because I would eat it all over again. Um, 
but man, Corn, do I have cabbage beef and cabbage and mashed potatoes. <laughs> I have cabbage butt real bad right now. <laughs> oh, no. I'm just putting that out there. <laughs> I don't think anyone needs to know that. Well, now they do. But I made corned beef and it was fantastic. She did. So she made, I mean, real corned beef, not some canned thing. Not uh, corned beef hash. I actually made corned beef. Yes. Raw to finish. It was it was really good and I steamed some cabbage oh, with so butter good. and salt and pepper. And then made my mashed potatoes. It was so good that when there was just kind of a watery schmear left in the pot that it cooked in, I almost wanted to keep that for something else. <laughs> to throw on top of your toast? What are you doing? Yeah. With that? Like it's so good. It's so freaking good. So, uh, anything about that process that you'd recommend? Like it's just, it's pretty basic. It's cabbage. It's pretty basic. It's that. It's very, you know, it's traditional in a very stereotyped way. I don't know yeah. what they actually do in Ireland for this. But what's the oh mashed potatoes? Those were real potatoes. Those were amazing. Yeah, um, those were pretty easy too. What else was oh? Um, you, uh, I did do carrots and a green salad. Oh yeah, steam steam style kind of carrot soft carrots. Those were great. Just well, a very. I just need more stuff for Carter because I can't just have potatoes and cabbage. That's yeah. not much of a dinner. So but I had lots of more vegetables for her. It was freaking fantastic. Yeah. Thank you. Like to the to the ninth degree, I was so into it. And so, right now, if you put on corned beef, because you cook it all day yeah. on kind of low, yeah. um, you could make one right now. You know, in if Germany. you're at the store right now listening, yeah. grab a corned beef. In Germany, they <laughs> say corned beef, they say. Yes. Yeah. I always like to bring that up for no good reason. For no good reason. Mm. You kept doing it at dinner. Well, my old pal Andrew <laughs> used to tell me this. He spent some time in Germany. He knows German. Mm-hmm. and His um, family's German. His family's German. And he says that they all call it corned beef. Every time corned you beef. eat it. Corned beef. Jawohl, eat the corned beef. <laughs> I assume is how they say I, it. I don't know. Let's just assume away. <laughs> Let's just assume. Um, well, anyway, that's fantastic. Uh, so go go well, try that you. yourselves. Should we put that somewhere? I don't know if that's a recipe eh, so much. It's not really a recipe. It's just the, I mean, you buy the corned beef and it's been sitting in salt water for a long time and the instructions are right on the package. It comes with the little seasoning Oh, you can packet. buy it pre-salted. I thought yes. you took a roast and then did the salting. No, I did the, I bought the corned beef pack. Oh, okay. All right. Well, still pretty legit. Yeah, I yeah. mean you can you can do it yourself, but it takes a couple weeks. Yeah, that's true. It's I, I don't have that kind of time. It's like making your own kimchi. You may as well just buy it. <laughs> Speaking of which, could a store near me please get kimchi again? I've had it with um, this. I know where to get you kimchi. Where? It's the Asian market. It's just on 90th <laughs> South. I'm going. Let's go. Let's go. Let's get some real. Oh, <laughs> let's go today. Okay. Can we go later? Maybe I grab some kimchi. Maybe we can. Are they I open think we today? Can. I, I don't know. All those Asians hate the Irish. Wow. Oh, my. Just anyway, I don't know. you don't know anything about I don't know this. anything about nothing. <laughs> yes, we will get you some kimchi. Okay. Well, for I'm a, sure. I'm pretty excited about getting me some kimchi. Um, I think it's going to do it for today's show. Thank you all for being yes, here. Yes, thank you. Yeah, Thanks we'll, for uh, all your calls and emails and surveys. Oh, yeah. We didn't get any voicemails, like though, this week. So get those back in here. 801-471-0462. Again, that is 801-471-0462. Leave us a voice message. We'll play it on the show. We love getting those. And you've been flooding us, us with them lately, but all, this week suddenly none. And I don't know why. Everyone's but, busy celebrating St. Patrick's yeah, People Day. have stuff to do. I get it. <laughs> Spring's a-coming. Indeed. I'm so excited. Uh, but uh, we'll be back next week with a whole new uh, set of affairs to talk about. I don't know what. Um, but keep, keep your great feedback coming, your great emails coming, and we hope you guys are enjoying Skim. If you would like to support us, it's simple and easy to do. Go on over to the main Frog Pants Patreon at patreon.com slash frog pants and this and other content come to you uh on the regular and it's just not going to cost you hardly a thing imagine touring just a dollar our way because you enjoy skim we'd really appreciate it we do so go check that out at patreon.com slash frog pants you can find that and everything else at frogpants.com slash skim it's gonna do it for us for me for kim see ya see ya next time oh hold on see wait see ya next time <laughs> This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Frog Pants Network. Get more shows like this at frogpants.com. And scene. I'm going to say and steam. And scene. Well done, everyone. Kim, any final words? Uh, Not really. I'm reading uh, what people are saying on the chat, and it's making me laugh. It says, please teach Scott how to cook and wash clothes. Nice. You should type (laughs) something in there, because now you have a Twitch account. 
You should say you something. You know how. Just type in there. Say hi. I like will. that. I did. I have. Oh, when? Today. Let's see you do, do it now. What's your name in there? What is it? Kim Sones Johnson, I oh, think. Oh, jeez. Putting the whole name in. Well, I... <laughs> Oh, I forgot to disable the stupid pop-up from D&D. You guys sit and look at our D&D scores while this is happening. Aww. That's okay. It's a small thing. I'm fixing it right now. Uh, disable. There you go. Okay. Yep, I'm Kim Stone Johnson. Should I put something else in there? Geek food, maybe? No, that's fine. Kim Stone Johnson. It's all good. Did you write something? Oh, there's her hearts. She doesn't even follow this channel. You should follow the channel. I don't. I'm sorry. I don't get into that <laughs> stuff. I'm usually doing laundry. That's true. <laughs>